I'm gonna show you how to create hair in Blender in one of the easiest ways ever. It gets really good results and I've been using it myself on the channel for the characters that I sculpt. In this video, I'll show you how to do it and also give you some tips on how to create hair in general, tips like, you know, hair flow and that kind of stuff. Let's get right into it. The method that I'm going to show you on how to create hair is something that I use for a lot of my characters. So let me just show you what it does. If I duplicate this hair mesh over here and go to edit mode, you can see that I have points that I can control and move around. I can also scale the hair up and down. I can scale individual points. I can also twist the individual points as you can see over here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. First things first, we're gonna create two curves. The first one I like to create is the path curve, and this is the one I use to control the hair mesh. And the second curve I'm going to use is the circle curve, which I will use to control the overall shape of the hair mesh. So let's do it right away. With Shift A, you can create curves over here. I'll create a path curve and another curve, which is the circle curve. Now I'll take both of these curves, I'll just put them up over here and rotate them at 90 degrees so that we have the same look that I have down over here. The orientation, however, does not really matter. So anyways, I'm going to scale both of these guys down. I'm just gonna use Control A to apply the scale since I scaled them in object mode, just so that we don't have any issues later on. And then I'm going to grab the path curve. So in the path curve, just make sure you go down to this icon over here. So it's the properties for the any curve that you have. And on the right, open geometry. And then in bevel over here, select the color picker of object and select the second curve, which is the circle. Once you do that, right away you're gonna see that the path curve got the shape of the circle. So I'm just going to rotate this so that we have the same orientation as the curves down, like so. And then I'm going to go to the circle curve over here and I'll move the points. So just to make sure that which points controls which area of the path curve, I'm gonna move this and then I'll look back and there you go. So it's controlling the area in the bottom over here. Just perfect. Okay, so what I can do is I'll just put it upwards like this. I'm just gonna remove the proportional editing. So I'm just gonna move it up over here. And then I will scale these guys. So to scale a point over here, you're gonna have to grab the outer points and scale it like so. So I'll grab these guys as well. And then I'll scale both of them like so. And I'll put them downwards by grabbing the middle points over here. And then I'm gonna grab this one. I'll move it downwards and I'll scale the outer points with S so that I have a sharp curve over here. I can also grab both of these points and just push them downwards and scale them. There you go. So now we have a sharp looking hair. Well, a hair mesh. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm gonna grab everything. I'll scale it on the X axis like so. And now we have something similar to this one over here. So why does it look different? That's because I went to edit mode to the individual points and I scaled each point. So when you do that and you try to scale it with S, it won't really work. That's because to scale individual points, just the points by itself, you're gonna have to use Alt S, like so. There you go. So this is how you scale individual hair strands. All right. So with Alt S, I'm gonna scale it. I'm gonna scale this point as well. There you go. I can also grab everything and use Alt S to scale it down or upwards as you can see, and I can also use Control T to tilt individual points when I'm basically trying to groom the hair. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna take this material, so I basically created material here, and to see it in the viewports display, I just changed the color over here. So I'm just gonna take the same one as I have over here with Control L materials, so I just linked the materials, and now I have the same hair that we have over here, just a slightly different shape. All right. There you go. Once you're done, now these two guys, you're just gonna keep them on the side. You can create a new collection, a new layer. So I can just hit M and move it to a new collection. Oops, new collection, and I'll call it hair control. All right, and now I can grab this one, shift D to duplicate it. I'll put it on the side over here, and then I can just rotate it and then go to edit mode and play with individual points to groom the hair, as you can see over here. So again, Alt S to control the shape of individual points, well, the size, and Control T to rotate or tilt each individual points. All right, 
Perfect. All right, so now that you know how to create hair in Blender, let me show you or give you a few tips on how to create hair for your characters. This is Oreraka Ochako that I sculpted on the channel. She's a character from My Hero Academia. I'll add a link in the description below to that video. But anyways, so first things first, look at a lot of reference, pay attention to how hair works. Also pay attention to the hair flow. So you can see over here, the hair starts right here and there's this movement, there's a flow that is all over her hair. So it kind of gives the impression of this movement over here. All right, let me just erase all of this. And then we have harmony versus chaos. So generally speaking, you wanna have some sense of harmony when creating the hair like she has over here, but also a little chaos can make things look interesting. Just pay attention not to overdo it, otherwise it'll break the look. So you can see over here that I have some hair strands that are going on the other side, and also some hair strands that are just out of you know the whole shape of her hair. So I'm creating some chaos. Next we have shape variation. So the shape variation is basically just like how when you create a character, you want to add big shapes, medium shapes, and then small shapes. It's the same thing for the hair. So you can see over here that I have bigger strands, smaller strands, another big strand over here. So I'm basically mixing it up and making it look interesting instead of creating only small hair strands or only big ones. That pretty much sums it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't give it, share it with your friends and, oh, and hit that notification fiction. No. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.